Dr. Radha Padmabhushan, Dr. Radha Krishnan, former chairman, uh, Indian Space Research Organization, request him to deliver the theme address. Good morning to all of you. And thank you, Mr. Vidyashankar, for this uh, excellent gesture of inviting me to give the theme address and also just know what you did. In fact, the credit goes to a great team of ISRO who did India proud and made the world look at India with awe and respect and see how we did it. In fact, this has been one of the examples which was quoted on September 25, 2014 in New Delhi as was told by the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji and later in U.S. when he went. Let me just tell you how we did it. Before that, let me just say on 29th of December in New Delhi, there was a, an interesting workshop that was also addressing the term make in India. And I must inform you that IESA put up an excellent show, Mr. Vidya Sagar and Mr. Krishnamurti, represented this institution in the breakout session and the performance was commentable of what you are doing and how that was articulated and what IESA experts from this major initiative of the country. We have seen the way electronics industry progressed in the country over the last six decades or so, I should say, starting with the ECIL, a major report by the government of India, formation of the Electronics Commission, and then what we are seeing till date. And in the process, the technology also progressed, and many things what we learned became obsolete, and newer and newer things came out. But if you look at the state of Indian electronics and semiconductor industry, we have miles to go and that's probably how you are looking at this vision to become a reality. And what I'm going to say now is over the last five decades how in the area of space in India we made it. First and foremost we saw the recent major mission, Mars Orbiter mission. And when we say we did it, that means we had an excellent launch vehicle that could perform the job. We had the technology to make a satellite that could go there, reach there, and be there, and also take decisions for itself, looking at the long distance that we talk about. We also built the deep space network and got the support from the rest of the world to track this spacecraft, send commands, and get the data. This was done by Indians, mostly with our own technology, devices, and processes, etc., that went into it. Concept of fruition we took four years, whereas Another mission that went along with us had about 11 years that was done by U.S. who had already done nearly 20 missions to Mars. So that is one aspect. You all know the cost of doing this was almost one-tenth of what they used. And there was an Indian way of doing it that is the innovative, novel way. Many like to call it frugal engineering but I would say it was an innovative way without compromising on the performance and the stringent requirements called for by such a challenging mission, and we did it. Another thing we did in the year 2014 was successful flight of the cryogenic engine. We were all looking for this for the last 22 years. And it is a complex technology. We had one attempt in the year 2010, but we did it well in the year 2014. So that was, again, an example of the Indian technological prowess 
So this is an example which we need to always remember that if we have the grit and determination, there is nothing impossible for us Indians to do it. And this is the lesson number one from this area. If you look at the recent major space mission that took place on the month of December 2014, the GSLV Mark III experimental mission. I'll just flag only one item there. That is the solid propulsion technology that India developed right from the textbook to becoming the third largest solid rocket of the world with just 200 tons of propellant cast, cured, and made without flaw, and its performance properly predicted. And that was possible, and that was done in India with the Indian technology. Right from the propellant ingredients that get into it, the machinery that is required for the processing, they were all done by our own people, some of them in Bangalore itself. So this is something which we should be remembering. Regional navigation satellite system, all of you know about the GPS system, the GLONASS system, and other systems coming up in the world. But for the strategic capability for India, not to be dependent just on others and get into problem when we have a problem, we decided to have a regional navigation satellite system. Three of them are up in the orbit. And they are giving now a positional accuracy of 10 meter. And I would say what we are doing today of trying to get semiconductor, electronics, industry come up to meet the national needs and the global needs is one such strategic requirement for the country. Certainly we can get them from other countries. There is no problem. But we must have, and without that, we are not going to develop further. And in India, if you look at the space program that grew from nothing over the last 50 years has been standing there in the first six, five, six, seven. That's the level in which India has been. And with the Mars Orbiter mission, all of us know we were the first to do it in the first attempt. And there are several areas where we are called the role models. We are number two, number three, etc. So that is possible. But if I look at specifically the electronics or the avionics that we put into these space systems, there is something which all of us should remember. We do things in India. The import component of a PSLV is 10%. The import component of a GSLV or GSLV Mar 3 is 20%. The import component of a satellite is typically 35%. Where does it go? It is because of the electronic components. We need to import them for the launch vehicles or for the satellites. Ground equipment we need to import. So this is the challenge for the electronic industry in the country. And if you look at the space industry itself in the world, which is quite big, 35% of that go into the ground equipment required to utilize these space systems. Two decades ago, we talked about communication equipment. Many of them are here who provided that. But today, with the navigation satellites coming up of India and other countries, this is another major area where a lot of investments on the ground would be required to have beautiful handheld receivers which are compatible with different global system. Even then, I should say this 10%, 20%, 35% is there after a long number of years of concerted efforts to develop electronic industry in the country by ISRO. What did we do? Just let me enumerate in the 70s. ISRO decided that as a matter of policy, we will work with industry. Industry will be our partner. And I remember when I went back from IAM Bangalore, back to ISRO, Trivandrum, one of the first jobs given to me was to set up 
a fabrication unit for electronics in Keltron, and we started with eight technicians in an air-conditioned, clean room, trying to make printed circuit boards and the cards for ground equipment. But from there, we have come a long way. Typically, if you look at a PSLV or a GSLV or GSLV Mar 3 that fly, we have the electronic packages built by Indian industry today. Whether it is Sendum, Data Pattern, or if you talk about Astra Microwave, Anand Technologies, they produce today the flight electronic packages, not with the components, components supplied to them. They screen them, they do the burning, they assemble it, they test it, and those packages are available to us. And what we have done is to standardize, and with that, today, we are in a good shape to say that Indian electronic industry is a major partner in our space program. The same thing happens for the satellite systems too. And if you look at another dimension of it, how we have grown in this area. In India, in the year 1987, we had a launch vehicle that had a flight computer controlling the vehicle's position, vehicle's path. We called that function as navigation, guidance, and control. We used a Motorola 6,800 chip at that time to build a flight computer and flew in the augmented satellite launch vehicle. We graduated over the last 20 years, went up to 68,000 system. We went for I-960, but we were dependent on this crucial item of the launch vehicle, and we needed to get it from the foreign vendor. And if they stopped, our program would have been stopped. So what our people did at that time is to have a chip, a 16-bit microprocessor, Vikram, that is the name, 1601, designed by our own people, but fabricated at Atmel in France. And this we tested in the year 2007, and we inducted that into the launch vehicle stream, and all our launch vehicles are now going with this chip that was designed by Indians, by engineers, officers, young team members. Today, IESA talk about large number of experts in this country who have the ability to design the chips. In fact, we have done it, we got the product, and the systems are all working beautifully. We also did another major initiative, that is turning around the semiconductor complex of Chandigarh for meeting the requirements of the strategic departments, atomic energy, space, and DRDO. Three, four major things we did there. Number one, we have a MEMS unit there now that is making several sensors, pressure, pressure temperature, etc., that are used in the ground-based observational systems. We also made there a small CCD that was flown in one of our satellites. That's called YouthSat. And a very major initiative that we did, and we set up a VLSI fab unit there, that is a feature space of 0 0.18 micron, 